Increasingly, this is starting to feel like a real-time digital art museum. This work, released by Sabato, came out two hours ago. It feels ready for your, you know, contemporary art institution, and it won't be there for years. But it will be there. But you saw it here first. Welcome back, Artist Journal, June 13th, 2023, broadcasting from the pirate ship of the mind in Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Welcome back. And, I mean, for those that are hyper you know, clued in on Twitter, you've probably already seen this. But for those that are just more casual, uh, here it is. So Sabato releases, actually, before we begin, and we can't watch the whole thing, uh, quick warning in advance, let me show you what Sabato is trying to do here. An attempt at recreating Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey using generative AIs. And so using AI video software, which is kind of like one of the latest AI things, and I believe the music is also AI, coming from Facebook research, interestingly. Uh, One of the greatest films ever made by one of the greatest directors, Kubrick, was a big inspiration for me as a kid. And And a reason I started doing photography, the series is dedicated to Pierre Menard, author of Don Quixote, in recreating the canon from digital scratch, we consider the fragility of our collective memories. We can also reconsider the canon in and of itself, what deserves to be called forth back into existence and why. Yeah, a question of time and what will stand the test of time. And for Sabato, the 2001 A Space Odyssey, he is recalling back and saying, you know, this perhaps is saying this is worth, you know, it, this stands the test of time and deserves a, a re-examination of sorts, a recreation of sorts using video AI. So let's take a quick look. Let me get the music a little better for you. So we're going to skip through it a little bit, though. But I want to give you a taste. I mean... I mean, you can see the AI here and almost the Hollywood music. And I'm going to scroll through a bit. This is five minutes long, so we can't watch all of it. And there are also copyright issues that we need to respect for Sabato. But you see a lot of, you know, visual references, let's say, to 2001 and... Here it all is. And almost this pseudo-classical music. Like, is this AI classical music? Because I think it is, and it's kind of funny. Now, there are transitions. This is a transition. Let me actually illustrate the transition. So here, because it's actually quite cool. And then nothing. So it's like a whole odyssey here. 2001, a space odyssey, courtesy of Sabato, recreated using AI. So pretty hilarious and pretty cool. Beautiful writing at the end, by the way. Great font choice uh, from from my perspective over here. So that is what is released. It sold out, I think, like instantly. It was listed at 537 at 20 Tezos only and was gone within an It took an hour and a half, surprisingly, to sell about, let's say, about 20 copies. And it's an edition of 21. I think Sabato has four. And so, yeah. 
So that is the latest from Sabato. Pretty amazing. And just, I mean, it's incredible what the video AI can do. And what I like about this is actually the concept. I think Sabato managed to use a brand new tool and made it interesting from an art perspective. Again, I think you could put this in a contemporary art gallery or museum, and it would actually be one of the more exciting pieces, perhaps, in, you know, you could put this in the entrance of a lot of these places. So it's just another testament, uh, in my view, on the depth and the... It, I was going to say legitimacy. This scene doesn't need any legitimacy. And so just more uh, the depth of the talent that is here. So we're, we've been looking at the views uh, on Twitter because it's super interesting. AI art is the hashtag here. I made a short film and I hope you enjoy it. And I mean, it's really cool. He made a short film. I mean, while juggling a job and everything else that he puts out, I mean, pretty impressive. So this was uh, came out this morning at 12.37, so it's been about 10 hours, and it has 6,000, so it's going to be really interesting to watch. 37 retweets. Let's see how far this goes, because this could go a lot further in the next day. Holy, holy, this is a masterpiece. So glad I was able to grab one. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. How could I not start with that? And also cool, I am very thrilled to welcome RJ. It is official on Wednesday Spaces, so kind of a mysterious figure. Uh, and so I am thrilled that RJ is coming on. And just to talk about his work, I'm what I can't wait to ask him is that series that we started with yesterday called Conversations. Is that pastiche? Are those all based on other paintings that I just don't know the reference to? Or are those new compositions? That is my kind of burning question. So come hang, hang out, talk art and art history with one of the great visual poets of Web3 is how I am presenting this. So yeah, come, come hang out. Rune Tune will be there and hopefully a whole bunch of other people too. And I just saw, since we're on RJ here, he just posted this yesterday, 12 hours ago, a self-portrait. So it's RJ week here, and uh, there is a self-portrait of RJ dressed up at his computer. It's great, and you gotta love this square pixel brush. Reminds me, it's like slightly bigger than the one uh, Rat Cloak uses. And look at this, a clue into the software, because this doesn't look like Photoshop, does it? It looks like a Photoshop type program, but this does not look like Photoshop. So interesting there as well. And you can see the Hockney pool uh, seemingly on in the background there. So beautiful uh, self-portrait here for 0.15 ETH and nice little write up here too. The self is a thing composed from many sources. As such, it remains a work in progress. As they say in Germany, Imma, always a work in progress. Uh, thank you for the comments. Great show as always. Thanks for the feature, made my day. And that made me really happy too, because you know, the world can be a challenging place. And if this show, you know, helps make people stay, you know, that actually means a lot to me. <laughs> that actually means a lot to me. So see you on Wednesday, Rune Tune. Great to hear. And Lepro Chant, great to hear from you. Will disposed with a very interesting comment here. The art pleb post is copy pasta. So I believe that was the post. Oops. I believe that was the post. I believe that was the post with... Uh, Crypto being dead and it feeling like it's more dead than ever. Crypto Twitter has been repasting it a lot lately. Maybe someone actually believes crypto is done, but most are just having a little fun degen trolling. So maybe it was like a satire. There have been many crypto cycles, but as this person points out, there have been many crypto cycles by this point, and it is a meme at this point that crypto is being dead, and I am aware of that. But to be fair, this does seem like a pretty dire moment especially for traders of coins and NFTs. It speaks to mech.txt's post about lowball sales, and I appreciate their sentiment on the matter. There have been many, there have been a lot of uproar and conversation, especially about a barrage of very low bids that are blowing up people's notifications. I agree with the right to be able to ask what one wants, 
but it might be nice for owners to have a certain notification parameter on exchanges so as not to drown out more favorable ones. You know, that is an excellent point because wouldn't you love to be able to control your notifications a little more? Some people, you know, will put out, uh, like there used to be a time when if you put out a FX hash work, your notifications would be blown up or if someone put one up, then all 500 works that they put on their FX hash would blow up your notifications and drowning out any other artists that you might want to know about and you don't see their notifications because they get drowned out. So that is actually an excellent idea for object, uh, you know, because notifications uh, are w like w one of the big like secret weapons of object of why that site works and why perhaps we're on object rather than open sea all day. I mean, obviously the, the price matters too, but in terms of that is like the secret weapon. So to really fine tune the notifications, I guess that's YouTube here, but fine tune the notifications on object is a brilliant idea. With these hard times come passionate and constructive discussions that can possibly lead to positive change. I mean, very well put, uh, wise words here. Another relative conversation that has been ongoing is about the world of Tezos and the apparent disconnect between the Tezos art community and the Tezos Foundation management of the blockchain. There really is actually, and I, you know, I never really thought about it too much, but it's a good point. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, complicated matters, but there was a good thread started by Zancan recently on this. So I will look that up actually for next show uh, to follow this thread here. Uh, so very interesting comment. Thank you, Will Disposed and Leprochant and Runetune. I wanted to point out another article here by Katya Kazakina. And this just came out. And again, if you follow her, I think you have to uh, ask to follow. But when you do, you can, she sometimes posts uh, excerpts from the, her articles that are hidden behind a paywall. And so Art Basel is happening and market reset or not, Art Basel still dazzles. Top trophies range from a $60 million Melon Rothko to $22.5 million Bronze Spider. So they never sold for this much. That's what is there. So this is what I wanted to point out, though. So Art Basel, which, of course, is in Basel, Switzerland, is arguably the, word, the, the world's most preeminent art fair. This is what I wanted to highlight here. Uh, and remember the uh, auction that went uh, Ari, uh, Ari or uh, that didn't go well the other day on, on the first day? I think it was a Christie's auction, if I'm not mistaken. And then on the second day, everything got bought up. So that was also an article by uh, Katya. So talking about the market, uh, I hear dealers are pre-selling art at a steady clip, but that many Americans aren't going. Why? Some collectors are still burnt out from the art avalanche in New York this May when a jumbo-sized cluster of fairs and auctions overpowered the market. Some are in wait-and-see mode. I'm sure that freaked out a lot of big-time collectors. If you're spending $20 million on an art piece, if you see a sale like that, probably they had, you know, those kind of people probably had a lot of similar thoughts than me, that, similar thoughts to me which is, well, maybe people were buying the bargains on the second day, or maybe that was an attempt to prop up the market. Who knows? So there is a bit of a wait and see mode. And then this is super interesting. Quote, unquote, reset is the operating word in the trade, but the picture is nuanced and complex. And this is what I wanted to highlight here. Mark Glimcher, president of Pace Gallery, a blue chip gallery, top tier. Quote, it's a time for rational pricing, and this is what I wanted to highlight, and fresh material. And friends, our prices may be low, but what this scene has is what Mark Glimcher, president of Pace Gallery, I would argue is suggesting the market wants, which is fresh material. So I thought that was... You know, again, a little glimpse, a little clue into the situation, because in a sense, I think a lot of people 
you know, have been feeling for a long time that they need fresh material in the contemporary art scene. That's why I'm so enthusiastic, really, about what I see here and probably part of the reason I show up four days a week and then a Twitter space on top of it. There is fresh material here. I mean, look at what Sabato just did. Wait till you see what LB is doing. We like it's here. It's here, I would argue. So again, uh, grounds for excitement and, you know, don't let the bear phase you out. Now is the time to really dig in. And here's more signs that there is traction. So again, just to you know, color the dynamic as I see it, on one hand, the contemporary art world is starting to feel like things need, they need a refresh, a refresh, let's say. Whereas on the other hand, we're seeing Popple and Strange Thing, as well as mech.txt, start to burst out and start to attract huge audiences, huge. Like dwarfing, I mean, we did this like six months ago. We looked at the Twitter feeds of Pace Gallery. and Like, I mean, uh, what's incredible too, just finally on this point, before I forget, uh, Elon Musk's tweet that, you know, that I was highlighting yesterday that you can now, you know, if you're verified, you can start to be paid for the ads that are in your feed. That tweet had 35 million views. And I was thinking, you know, Popple had 10%. At three and a half, now it's at 3.8 or 3.9 million views, that one post. Popple had 10% of Elon Musk's views. Pretty astonishing. Now, here we go. Strange thing. My most viral post to date on Instagram. I mean, this is a daily, you know, this is a real-time situation. Uh, in our real-time digital art museum here, in our real-time art museum online, these are, normal, these are normally numbers... These are normally numbers accounts with 1 million plus followers received, feeling blessed. So just pointing out here these two posts that he had. And look at this too. Uh, you know, in the three seconds ago, 190 others. So probably every time he logs in, it's like 200 more people have followed him. Like that is what's going on. And then here are the posts. 340,000 likes on this post with the relief in the jacket. And then the iPhone post, 320,000 on Instagram. So, again, uh, the plot thickens from both sides here. Uh, finally, just on the bear market here, and there's a lot of uncertainty out there with everything that's going on. You know, tech stocks going up and crypto being left behind is concerning, uh, you know, is kind of hitting sentiment, you might say, in the, uh, you know, Web3 crypto, you know, blockchain uh, community here. And uh, unknown collector, respect to the artists who still mint even though nobody buys. Respect to the artists that stopped minting and are watching what's happening from the sidelines. Respect to those who realize that there is no right or wrong and we are still figuring out this madness. And this is, again, remember that I think it was Zach from Super Rare and just this sense that, like, I just love these kind of posts that, you know, are showing humility here that basically nobody has all the answers. And, you know, if you're, you're lucky, if you kind of have part of an answer out there. So we're all just trying to figure out this madness. So don't despair if you feel like things are going bad. Uh, nobody knows what's going on in large measure. We can speculate and everything, but just, you know, uh, we're all figuring this out. Uh, continuing on, so as I was mentioning, there's something incredibly beautiful about this static image here. And it's funny, I instantly recognized it. So this is LB, who is on fire. I mean, I've started two shows in the last like week and a half with LB's work. And it just goes to show, because I don't. there was like some LB along the way, but I don't think, I think it had been months since I'd started with LB. And now... It just goes to show that as an artist, you need to keep persisting and just keep trying new things and keep working and you stumble across stuff. It's kind of like uh, success. I mean, Brian Tracy, one of the great, uh, what I call success coaches, but with the, almost the original life coach. Uh, what did he say? Success, as he said later in his career, 
I've come to the realization that success is largely statistical. The more things you try, the more likely you are to succeed. A very simple idea. And that is what I see here with LB. Keep trying out new things, keep trying, keep going, keep going. The more things you try, the more likely you are to succeed. We had those beautiful uh, Nintendo ROMs, but added that extra layer of the, gl- of the video glitch, which kind of compounds the glitch. And here is another, uh, my new collection is now live on Object. Step into the colorful world of Elby's Adventure Pop Culture Remix. Beautiful title, where classic imagery is reimagined through nostalgic lens of Mario Paint on Super Nintendo. First Mint, the return, is now available for offers. So how exciting and beautiful is this? And of course, from Twin Peaks, and there is LB's uh, uh, profile picture, which is taken from uh, Mario Paint. And just look at the rich texture. I mean, it's just beautiful. So... Very cool. Here it is. I have put in an offer. I may need to update my offer soon before it gets. Uh, there's still another few hours here, and I simply must have one of these. And the color is beautiful too, and the concept is brilliant. Isn't it just so much fun? And it's again, we're back to the texture here. And you wonder is this like it looks like a screenshot based on the border here? Uh, and is this a screenshot that's processed? Like, is all this extra texture LB's doing? Or is this Super Nintendo? Interesting question. Uh, continuing on, PP Universal with a really cool work here. Kind of a nice, cool, again, feels like contemporary art gallery kind of work with the composition and even just the treatment of all the objects and everything. This could be us, but you don't want to try ayahuasca. Bleh. So... Again, referring to the tryptamine hallucinogen that people often do in Peru and maybe other, uh, maybe Brazil and the Amazon there. And throwing up the drink is a part of the process here. Anyways, look at the socks here. So I think a really interesting and just really cool work. And again, has the feeling of a contemporary artwork. Uh, Seven Tezos, edition of five. Two left, so get it while you can. I might need to run after this. I picked this up as well, Lonely Keys by The Side Hustle, number two. And I thought this was beautiful. Side Hustle has done synth work before. Probably the synth sold me on it. I mean, it's just one of those things. It's like synths and palm trees and who knows what else. Interesting perspective on this piano, by the way. It almost looks uh, hand-drawn, so to speak which is interesting. So really cool work here. A nice little touch with the stairwell here. And great floor. So Lonely Keys number two. Let me just see if there's a Lonely Keys number one. So maybe further down. So maybe it just was never posted. So poetic title there. Lonely Keys number two. Beautiful. Look at this gorgeous work by Tom Bombadil, who is, you know, continues to evolve and develop here. Cosmic Visitors, and you got to love the almost like what it looks like to me is like a UFO at either sunrise or sunset. And here the guy is getting vacuumed up or coming down onto the landscape here and the rat and everything. So just a really nice work. And I think also the reason why this work seems to work is because of the uh, the the outline here like the opening in a sense what you might call the crop even though it's a rectangular work uh, this black kind of border really adds a dynamism as if you're looking out from a cave so it creates a real dynamic comp- composition here very 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 nice work from Tomba Battle um, mech.txt the decline of code current bid 0.4 ETH so that is pretty nice here let's quickly look at the work And as you see here, uh, using a lot of uh, mech.txt's tropes, Michael Micasso, but also, again, something that he's added recently is this GIF, as far as I understand, is this movement with GIFs and just adding kind of color and dynamism. And again, making it dynamic in some areas and leaving it static in others, a very powerful effect. So... 
Here it is 289 by 289 scaled up by 10, 16 frame GIF and few people bidding on this, I mean, which is pretty awesome too. It's not just two people, it looks like it's four different people. So right now the Metalogist really wants it at 0.4 ETH. Now, just to get the, uh, I just wanted to show, because mech.txt has been doing outstanding. He's right there, you know, kind of on the heels. I don't want to say, he's on the heels of Popple in the sense that for, for me to see 42,000 views here was not a shock. Let's put it that way. And again, the pixel art, the pixel art is really resonating here. And I think he's up maybe a few hundred, if not a thousand followers from just a couple of days ago. So again, that uh, strategy of using, uh, of putting out pixel art, just putting out your images, uh, if it moves, if it you know resonates with the public, you really get followers and that matters. So again, 138 retweets. And part of this other series here, a little, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, let me, I brought up the works here from Foundation. And so here are other works, which I actually missed. So again, playing with these kind of dynamic, uh, taking the pixel art and making it dynamic. And also combining the landscape and the classical references, that looks like David there. So very, very interesting as artists continue to evolve and develop. Pamelo Cerrone, Cerrone, Cerrone. I'm sad I missed that one of one yesterday. Bridget, New York City, shout out, got, got it in the last 10 minutes there. I would have loved to have had that piece. Uh, so here's another one of one. Now it's at auction for five uh, and not a number. So these are starting to move here, these one of ones. And so now it's at five Tezos and there's another 20 hours. Let me just look at the title. Uh, Dans le l'air. So just an interesting experimentation here, almost like, uh, almost doing the daily here, uh, the daily, like doing regular output here and just cool abstract and not worrying too much about it, experimentation. So very cool. Santiago with some very cool abstracts here at auction for only three Tezos, edition of 15. Let me just see what happened here. Uh, so most of them sold for two on primary. Actually, I picked up one of these. And just interesting take on abstract. What I like about it is it's consistent with his previous uh, abstract work, but here it's just all dithered and everything. And there's a whole series too which, and here it is, you can see all four. And what I like about it is the consistency. When you do a series, it's like, okay, this isn't a one-off. These are part of a conceptual process that is going on here, an experimentation. And that's again, where I come back to this idea. This is qualitative science is how I put it. This is not like quantitative, like it's, these are explorations. For me, in a, using science in the sense of the word as knowledge, uh, these are kind of qualitative, not quantitative, but qualitative explorations uh, that have value. And that is why they're significant and meaningful. Uh, so here are all four. So I would have loved to pick up all four because then you can just put them on the wall, you know, and how cool, you know, all in one room, again, in the metaverse museum in my mind here. Uh, so here is one you can get for 10 Tezos also on secondary and so very cool and 645 by 697 upscaled to 100 times, no, 10 times to 6,450. So keeping with the huge files here. A uh, bite by bit also using retro tools here. It's called Pixland 4002, kind of a nice minimal work here. A landscape seemingly, although not for sure, maybe it's atmosphere too, a star and a comet or something, maybe a meteor and maybe a bright kind of sparkling star over there. And you gotta love the color of the stars here, red, violet, just nice detail there. One of one available for 10 Tezos, which is only $7.33. Here's another one, this one sold a hardball star. This went to Haiti Rocket for 25 Tezos. Hardball used to be, uh, there was a game on the Apple IIe called Hardball so again, these are speculative, if I understand the series right. These are speculative uh, video games, what we might call simulacra. 
according to our earlier definition in that whole discussion we had. It's important that we return to that at a certain point, just so that we, just like pastiche, we talked about it early on. And then we, to me, I had to go back to it two or three months later to really uh, internalize what that meant and go deeper into the definition. So we will do that also with simulation and simulacra. Uh, but there's no rush, hardball star 2010. So a speculative, a virtual, a simulacra of a video game here by Bite by Bit, selling to Haiti Rocket for 25. Speaking of which, Hollow Teleport with the super cool writing here, edition of seven. So it all seems to be happening while I'm asleep. And it seems to me, again, that Haiti Rocket may be using a, a, another layer of here, right? It almost looks like there is another layer going on of technology. Almost like uh, we saw with LB, with the analog processing of the analog video processing of the glitched ROM. And I wonder if we're seeing little fragments of that over in this work here. And that's cool too. Just very, it looks like almost like a scientific, speaking of science, it almost looks like a scientific uh, video game. Ranix Deer with another cool work and quick correction actually yesterday's, I think this was from yesterday where there's this pipe here that changes colors. This is on object, not foundation as I thought. So present, so very cool, still available. Uh, eight left at five Tezos, so $3.67 for your beautiful abstracts here. And here's intrusive thoughts, another interesting abstract here. So let's just play this. Very kind of high resolution looking on these bubbles here and just interesting work from Ranexteer. So that is an addition of 22, price is eight Tezos and there are two left. So they are also selling, and look at that. So seven Tezos, so selling very well. Uh, and continuing on, Santiago Ruao, powerful intuition, an interesting uh, static abstract and almost looking like op art a little bit and just some heavy contrast. And what it is, is it seems to be almost like, you know, a freehand uh, finger touch stroke here but then, and then repeated, but then with gradients uh, intermixed on, kind of masked on each uh, column, let's say. So interesting work here, a one of one for 20 Tezos from Santiago Ruao. And continuing on Gozo with another, you see all these interesting abstracts here uh, that are appearing. So look at this, and we've seen a few by Gozo in this style and just, I think, posted one a few weeks ago. They sell for a lot uh, considering uh, the market and everything. I think there's like a series of collectors here. So this is an addition of 15. Let me just show you already uh, 65 Tezos down to 40 Tezos for an addition of 15. So that is a very strong, healthy market here. That night, MP4 by Gozo at Uncertain Gaze. And I don't think any have been accepted yet. So that is impressive. Lord continues to do really well, Away in Silence. So a static work in that style, uh, that kind of almost mystical style here by Lord. Away in Silence, faces without mouths, yet they speak with their eyes, transmitting emotions, stories that mesmerize. In the absence of sound, the silence awakens, an invitation to listen where stillness is taken. Lord, Object 2023. So as you're gonna see here, uh, sold for 25 Tezos on primary and quite a few editions, I believe, edition of 30. So that would be 600 Tezos. So not a bad haul, especially in this market. So another strong market for Lord Object there. Dan Control with a beautiful work here, uh, Goldfish. And again, master of the gradient here a calling card, a trademark. And here we see, again, this awesome background here of the water and the fish itself, great composition, probably using some reference, I'm assuming found online, but looks great, great choice. And look at the gradient in there. So really awesomely executed, especially over here with the light and the head and everything. 
Uh, just very cool work. So this sold for six Tezos on primary. Maybe there are a couple left here. There are five left. So get it while you can, $4.40. Mental Noise with a work in progress. And again, using the rabbit mask and everything. And here you see a series of TVs in the background and kind of just a cool, fun, kind of youthful work here. And then some goggles. Maybe these are VR goggles. Kind of reminiscent of Martin Joe's work uh, yesterday. Uh, continuing on, Turkarak. So Turkarak is experimenting. A lot of it is uh, not suitable for work material. This one was okay. So in terms of content to be shown on this channel. But what's so interesting about Turkarak is starting to experiment with uh, painting. And so here is a work, kind of a domestic scene here. And so interesting to see the experimentation going from illustration, really interesting artist. So one of one available for $11 from Turkarak, who is a very interesting artist. Relationship on the rock. And look who's back making stamps. Flora Marquez, Morondanga Republic is back, friends at the summer carnival. So after taking a couple of weeks off here, with the daily illustrations is back. And interestingly, with this kind of painterly background here, Friends at the Summer Carnival. So I picked up one of these, three Tezos, which is the price of the work. So that's kind of cool here too. So great to see the stamps back in action, which I'm a huge fan of. So was, look at Mentalist 420 picking up a few, Captain Kimmy picking up a few. And there's Tornado Rodriguez, the guy Tradscape, I've told this story very briefly, but the guy who does the music for this show at the start and the end, very talented guy who I haven't seen him mint too much recently, he messaged me like two or three months into this show and he said, where's Flora Marquez? Because she's a great artist. Why don't you have Flora Marquez on the show? So we have fixed that. Uh, so shout out to Tradscape if he is watching out there somewhere. And here, for those that don't know Flora's work, you see these stamps here. So that is how I got to know Flora's work, were the stamps way back when. They're beautiful, beautiful compositions and works. Again, more illustrative, and in this other one, more painterly. So like Turkarak, taking a shift towards the, these great painter tools, probably on uh, Procreate. And this I found in, uh, in Flora's collection. This is Katerina Create. And I thought this was a pretty nice illustration. Again, could hang really well with... Uh, Lewis Osborne, for example, it kind of has that similar kind of thin illustrative style. Anyway, really beautiful work here. Uh, someone eating what looks like a hot chocolate, a cookie, and a pair. Fave cookie, good morning. Only two Tezos, edition of 15, and 11 left. So nice discovery here, and I brought up the page. So again, it always pays to look through other artists' collections, because you will definitely discover work here. So I make sure to do it every so often. So very cool. Kind of love these. Uh, two sisters here, two fates. I mean, nice work. One of one for 35 Tezos here. So, you know, $25. So an opportunity to discover an, and collect an artist early. Igor Kapustin is back and someone who I discovered from Lewis Osborne's collection. Another interesting illustrator here. I thought this was quite a nice piece too, uh, here too with this almost, it almost looks like an old city in somewhere like a vacation or like a vacation place with the repeated tables here. But it almost looks like a stage set too and it's artificiality. So anyways, Interesting piece here, Buenos Aires, that's what it is. I'll have to visit there, that looks beautiful. Uh, edition of five, these are sold out on primary uh, at eight Tezos and now available for 40 Tezos on secondary. And here's DJ Kiro, and I don't know what this says, but it is a new kind of anime glitch work here. And here you can see it and that is the work. So you see basically anime cartoons and you see some glitched out, you know, processed through analog uh, gear here, creating a pretty cool effect available for 0 0.069. And there is a whole series, a whole collection here, uh, anime glitch. Here it is. And so you can see all sorts of other ones here too that have been coming out. So that is very cool. And continuing on another anime glitch work, this time by LB. LB's on fire. Hey, body double. 
So great color here and just another really cool work uh, on doing anime and glitch. It's a great combination. It's a nice contrast because you get texture on this very illustrative style. So very cool here. Edition of six for six Tezos, five left on that beautiful work. And Futoji and Lydia Moon. So the collaborations continue here. I don't know if there's volume. I don't think there is. There is not. So just a cool uh, a kind of taking that figure that is in all these works and then also using the old kind of handy cam user interface here and kind of applying, I think, some texture to it here, almost like an, I don't want to say an underwater wave texture, but some kind of texture on top. And you almost see these kind of cosmic, you know, flower mushrooms over top here. So wild work, I mean, you see it here, kind of reminiscent of these kind of things you see in an Alex Gray painting, this eyeball that's kind of flying up in the sky here. And so anyway, interesting work. I picked one up at two Tezos. Interesting discovery, Lydia Moon, in the last month or so. Ex Mortal with a super cool work here. Kind of reminds me of J.G. Ballard as we move down the spinal column here. I think that's what we're looking at. It looks like the vertebrae, vertebrae of the spinal column. And, you know, I'll tell you what I, there's the palm trees that I would be all over. Also medical imagery like this could be super interesting uh, put through this whole process. So very interesting. Discordia uh, by Ex Mortal for five Tezos and edition of five, sorry, five left, edition of 15. A couple of really nice works by Marina Amadova. I didn't see them minted anywhere, but I thought they were super interesting. I saw them on Instagram where she is as well. So this work I thought was quite beautiful with the wallpaper in the background and everything. And here's another one that I thought was also interesting and with a poem attached to it here. So very interesting work here. And these last two, they're kind of powerful portraits. They look like the same figure here. So just interesting. And this hand looks backwards too. So all very interesting. And of course, uh, we know who this is, Gary Gensler. Uh, by Leprochant, materials, greed, ego, lies, falsehood, egomania, corruption, extortion, blackmail. So people are not happy with Gary Gensler right now because he is, a, he is attacking this very scene that we are so proud of. It, well, I don't know if we're entirely proud of everything. There are a ton of scams in this scene, but that's true of any financial market. I might add, and and if you want to, and same with any like contemporary art scene, that's probably much cleaner. Our art scene is probably very clean relative to the contemporary art scene. So, you know, anyway, so my point bringing this up is look at how beautiful this is. This is a brilliant sculpture, almost done in real time. I assume it's a real sculpture or if it's, I'm not sure if it's 2D or 3D work, uh, but very cool work here by Leprochant. And that, my friends, is your show. Thank you for joining me. Come join RJ tomorrow on Spaces. That'll be awesome. Until next time, take care.